Hi folks, welcome back. Tonight I'm going to use this to uh, do a little bit of cleanup on some of the bolts for the bridge port I'm using. And I'm also going to show you how I screwed up and shouldn't have. I knew better. That's coming up. Now it's time for a tip from Don. In the last video, I talked about this little uh, Milwaukee Fuel right angle grinder that I fell in love with. Don't tell my wife. Anyway, it uses these little batteries and this is what comes with it. I've since bought some bigger ones, but they all interconnect the same way. They slide in the bottom of this and clip into place. Now in the other video, I was griping about how when you have arthritis, trying to get this stupid thing out of here, well, it worked that time, but 90% of the time I fight with them. I was to the point where I was going to grind the little nubs off, make it easier. Then Don said he found a way to do it, and I'm going to demonstrate it for you. Now Don said you take the tool and you lay it over on its back or whatever where you can grab it like this and put both thumbs there and push in with your thumbs and away push in and away what do you know that works a heck of a lot better who would have thought it i asked don where he came up with that little trick and uh, he said, I don't know, I was just messing with it and aggravated and I turned it over and put both thumbs there and pushed it away. It worked better. You have a little more power with your thumbs now. My thumb's been operated on. It's got a scar all the way up here. It's still hard, but I can manage it. So that's Don's tip of the week. Probably the year, maybe the century. Sorry for the extra noise. That's my rotary phase converter. It's a, five, a 10 horsepower one that I've got up on the mezzanine. Someday I'm gonna move it outside with the 20. Make it a lot quieter in here. Between that and bells going off. I'm gonna use the, the buffer polisher that I found, showed you a video of a couple weeks ago. One of the problems with it was one of the grease cups was jammed up and couldn't get it loose and cross threaded. So I went online and I found another one and I took a gamble because almost everything you can find were metric. Well, I found one that was a eighth inch pipe thread like these are and it's a little bit bigger. Now, I don't know if you remember, but this is how they work. You put grease in these caps and then here, then you screw the lid on. And every once in a while you screw it down some. And that greases that bearing. You don't have to put a lot. But you need to put some in every once in a while. That's a blue grease. It's for electric motors. Anyway. I used the old parts washer and cleaned up a lot of the bolts and stuff for the bridge port. Now I'm going to use the, the wire wheel and uh, clean them up. So let me get some stuff on and we'll get to it. Since I'm going to use a wire wheel, put on one of these. That's what happens when you get that thing on there.
five minutes. Five minutes and I got some nice looking bolts. And it'll make it go back together easier. Hi folks. I got a messy job to do tonight. It's finally cooled down enough out here in the main shop. Got a new air conditioner to put in. I just haven't had the time or resources to make it happen just yet. But it's sitting over there on a, a counter. And as soon as I modify my lift table, I will take and put it up. Let's see if you can see. Under, right above that Quincy air compressor. That's my oldest air conditioner in the shop. I've had it for... Now you can't see my head. Come on. That's the reason Don doesn't want to do videos. The time it takes to get something done and do a video of it. Don't get much done. Anyway. Before we get to the using the buffer on those uh, bolts, I'm going to show you what I did to the bolts beforehand. I used my old Clark parts washer. You see, long ago I figured out that the guys over on the Pakistani truck channel, they can squat lower than I can. And more importantly, they can get up when they squat. I, I went down to, uh, I believe it was Tractor Supply about 10 years ago, and I bought one of these inexpensive parts washers. This one's a Clark 20 gallon, and it's been hanging around the shop ever since. In fact, I can't remember the last time I changed the, the, the cleaner in it. And the main reason, it doesn't have a drain on the bottom. Well, other than that, it's pretty good. It's sadly needing a change of fluid. So I was thinking about picking it up with my tractor forklift, taking it out to the burn pile and using it to start the next fire. But my wife, of all people, said, why don't you just suck it out of there? And then I remembered this. Now, if you guys haven't seen these, these are the next best invention since sliced bread. These are fluid transfer pumps. I've been using them about four or five years, ever since I saw a guy doing his tractor with one. You can buy them anywhere. This one was like $14 from uh, uh, Walmart, but you can buy them Amazon, whatever. We've tried all different kinds. They don't last a long time. They're cheaply made, but they do work. And they're gonna make this little job a heck of a lot easier. Now, now this parts washer doesn't really get any love around here. All it gets is a bunch of greasy things stuck into it. It lives over in the corner, quietly minding its own business until I notice it and decide to put it to work. Came with one of these little small parts baskets. Got the uh, automatic lid closer disabled right now because I was washing a very big part in it. Got to put the pin back. This thing's got a linkage in it. If it catches on fire, it'll automatically close the lid, which is a good thing. It's got this flimsy little tray that I always put too big of a, an item on and bends it, but hey, it's been working. These work, you stick this in your gas can or whatever, and this is the output tube. Now, I'm not gonna let it go all the way to the bottom because there's probably about four inches of gunk on the bottom. But I need to... There's a brush. All 
right, I kind of cleared it out of the bottom. Let's see if it works. There it goes. God, my wife's smart. If it works. It's got a 12D battery in the top. And these are rated for flammable liquids, so... It's working. I wonder if Jimmy Hoffa's down in here. Rag. Brush. No, no Jimmy. These are old cat litter jugs that I'll go sit outside and put a tarp over them. Don't trust them in here. Take them down to the burn pile. Just like that, I got about two gallons of fluid out of there. Turn the button off. Cap. I ask why I have so many dang cat litter boxes. I live out in the middle of the country and for years and years and years our cats have always been outside cats. But over the last couple three months we've had a uh, feral cat move into the area and he's we think he's killed one of our other cats and so every night we round up the one cat that's left or the one of the two and he lives in the barn all night long, so we have to put cat litter out for him. Of course, I guess it's only right. He was born in this barn. His mama was a feral cat and drug him in behind some pipe I had laying up. I couldn't ever get to him. He grew up in here. There we go. I don't know what to do about that feral cat. My wife wants me to just dispatch him. And I confess I have taken a few pot shots, but not to hurt him, just to try to scare him off. And he goes for about two or three days, then he shows back up. So we've been keeping the food away from him. Our other cats are about to revolt over that, but trying to keep them safe. I'm sitting out here in the dirty part of the machine. This one's not air conditioned all the time. Just looking at all the machines I have to fix coming up. Uh, seems like they never end. There's just a continual parade through here. Not all of it. Now this thing's down to a manageable size. I'll let this drain out tonight. No Jimmy Hoffa. Dang it. But now it's down to a manageable thing. I can scoop all that into a, a bucket, clean it up a little bit, put some fresh fluid in it, and be good for another 10 years. <laughs> 